हेलो फ्रेंड्स माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर अनुराग तिवारी एंड टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस थ्रू दिस वीडियो द एक्सटर्नल फिक्सेटर्स एंड द प्रोस्थिस पार्ट सो वी हैव ऑलरेडी कवर्ड इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो द इंस्ट्रूमेंट एंड द अदर इम्प्लांट द टूडे आई विल बी फोकसिंग ऑन एक्सटर्नल फिक्सेटर्स एंड द प्रोस्थिस सो एज फार एज द एग्जाम पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू द इज कंसर्न द फिक्सेटर्स द मेनली द लीनियर टाइप ऑफ फिक्सेटर देर आर टू टाइप ऑफ फिक्सेटर द लीनियर टाइप दैट इज एओ टाइप ऑफ फिक्सेटर्स एंड द इलिजारो दैट इज द रिंग टाइप ऑफ फिक्सेटर्स दे आर इम्पॉर्टेंट एंड इन द प्रोस्थिस मेनली द हिप प्रोस्थिस वॉट वी आर कंसिडरिंग इन द प्रोस्थिस एज फार एज द इम्प्लांट इज कंसर्न वी आर कंसर्न अबाउट द हिप प्रोस्थिस सो वी विल बी कवरिंग दैट ओके सो वी स्टार्ट फर्स्ट विद द एक्सटर्नल फिक्सेटर द एओ टाइप सो दे आर द कंपोनेंट्स हियर these are the main components of the external fixator or the linear type of external fixator so if i tell you that this is the shanch pin the identifying feature is it is blunt at one end sharp at the other end and where there is a sharp end there will be threads for purchase in the bone it could be cortical or cancellous depending upon the pitch this is cortical type of shanch pin this is the rod with connected universal clamp this is the universal clamp which you see here this is basically the pin to tube clamp or i could show you how it gets fixed here this is how we attach the pin to the clamp and the rod or the connecting rod or the tube we can also say it as a tube we connect it like this so this is the assembly in this way we are going to attach usually we need two or three pins in the proximal fragment two or three pins in the distal fragment like this we can attach now when we need a certain modularity between the fragments we need this clamp this clamp is actually tube to tube clamp because the two tubes or the two connecting rods can be connected here in this way so this gives you a modularity where you need to do a knee uh, spanning external fixator or the ankle spanning and you need the tube to tube clamp so in this way you can connect them now the second question they can ask you that about the indications of the external fixator where you are going to use the external fixator what are their indication so i will tell you the most important is the open fracture the open fracture is where the fracture hematoma is communicating with the external environment so whenever there is a open fracture the skin is not good the soft tissue condition is not good and you are going to do the instead of internal fixation you are going for the external fixator so that is the main indication and the other indication if you want to enumerate there could be the whenever there is a you have done the nerve injury or you need fixation whenever there is a vascular injury vascular injury with bone fracture then you are going to fix it with a external fixator the other is the infected non union or the elizaro type of fixator has a different indication we will talk about it in detail so now we come to the elizaro type of fixator i have only this in the elizaro this is actually half ring the half ring is uh, again joined with the counter part of its half ring the another half ring and it forms a complete ring so there are various sizes from approximately 140 size to around 240 or 260 size is available so the rings are made like this by connecting the two half rings by the bolt which is known as ring to ring fixation bolt then another thing is here the elizaro wire let us assume that this is the elizaro wire however they are looking the same but they have a more length as compared to this and the diameter of the elizaro wire is 1.8 mm in the adult and 1.5 mm in the child there are three type of elizaro wires one is bayonet the another is trocar and another is olive wire so they are basis on the on the basis of the uh, shape of the tip i don't have the wire but yes there are three types of wires and they are going through the bone and they get connected to this ring with the help of wire to ring fixation bolt so they could be eccentric or centric eccentric if the wire is coming eccentric to the hole then you can connect with the bolt which is eccentric and if it is coming center to the hole you will connect it with a centric type of bolt so that is the wire to bring fixation bolt another assembly there are multiple type of plates which are there in the elizaro you can use them and uh, another important is the tensioning 
which is important because the wires are very fine they are about 1.8 mm in diameter they are very thin but the patient start bearing weight immediately after the procedure <clears throat> it is because the patient the wire they give the strength to the whole construct by virtue of tensioning so we have the tensioner with the elizaro and with the help of this tensioner we give tension to the wire so the tension once they get the tension and the patient can bear weight the stability of the construct increases with the help of this tensioning so in the elizaro they can ask you about the principle of this fixator the principle is actually distraction histiogenesis just remember it is histiogenesis that means histio means tissue and genesis means to produce or to form a new tissue so distraction with the help of distraction the new tissue is being formed so the main uh, distraction part they can ask you that uh, how much is the distraction required so it is actually the formula is 1 mm per day four times a day na no? 1 mm per day and uh, we need to distract 8.25 mm four times a day so morning evening night morning afternoon evening and night you can divide them and you explain to the patient that 0.25 turns you need to rotate the rods so that you get 0.25 into 4 that is 1 mm per day so that is the known as the distraction rate and 0.25 times 4 times a day another thing they can ask you about the components so there are half ring full ring and the wire fixation bolt the ring fixation bolt and the connecting rods screws plates there are multiple things so i think this is enough about the elizaro and they can ask you about the indications of the elizaro fixator so the indications of elizaro are mainly the when you need the bone lengthening or the bone transport they are used in the complex uh, infected non union or even in the non infected non union non union and uh, in case of uh, arthrodesis many people are using nowadays the arthrodesis and even nowadays the periarticular fracture has uh, gained popularity the elizaro has gained popularity so mainly if you remember the most important is the non union complex non union infected non union and the uh, bone transport of bone loss now we come to the prosthesis part usually the hip prosthesis they are important now the hip prosthesis are divided into two that is the hemi arthroplasty or hemi replacement and the total hip replacement we do not have the total hip replacement but i will show you what it is uh, the total hip and uh, hemi has actually the two types of hemi one is known as the unipolar or monopolar type of hemi arthroplasty and the other is the bipolar so monopolar if i tell you the monopolar is basically the head is a monoblock there is a single head the main indication of hemiarthroplasty is when there is a fractured neck of femur you need to replace the head and the neck portion so you will replace it with this prosthesis the prosthesis definition is when you replace a body part so that is the hip prosthesis we are replacing the hip component so this is the head if you see carefully that the head is fixed to the stem and there is no rotation possible this is a single head single block so this is monopolar or unipolar you can say this is also unipolar but in this case if you see there is a inner component of the head and a outer shell which is moving independently so this is actually bipolar because there is two movements possible one is the acetabulum and the shell in between these two and the other is the shell and the head of the prosthesis so this is the bipolar this is actually the unipolar type of prosthesis and this is known as austin moore the name is austin moore prosthesis the identifying feature is there are two holes or the two fenestration in the stem part so it is because they are self locking type of prosthesis in this the bone graft is being fitted and once we fit inside the canal of the femur the bone graft get uh, attached to the native bone so this is actually a self locking type of prosthesis and it should be used when the bone quality is really good so that is the main mechanism by which this function whereas if you have the bone quality is not so good then you can use the thomson type of prosthesis and the main indication of thomson this is thomson prosthesis the main indication of thomson prosthesis is when the neck is resorbed because this has the white collar and when the neck of the femur is resorbed we usually prefer the thomson prosthesis and thomson should be used with bone cement or with or without bone cement however the austin moore prosthesis cannot be used with cement the bone cement should not be used with austin moore because if the bone cement goes inside this hole the difficult uh, will be the removal part so the implant removal or the prosthesis removal would be difficult once the bone cement if you use with the austin moore prosthesis now the third variety is this bipolar type of prosthesis the bipolar the theoretically they say that there is a 
longevity increases with the use of this bipolar because there is two movements or the two um, surfaces we have the movement now this is the we assume that this is the estabulum the natural estabulum and the shell and the shell and the head so there are movements at the two places so they say theoretically that there is a uh, more chances of longevity we can increase by the use of this bipolar however there are debate that uh, even after two three years or even after four five years the bipolar behaves as same as monopolar so this is actually a debatable issue but uh, yes this can increase the range of motion and this can increase the longevity of the implant so this is uh, the main mechanism the main indication is the fractured neck of the femur when we want to replace the head and the neck of the femur we are using this hip processes in the total hip replacement we are replacing the head and neck as well as the estabulum so the estabulum portion will also be there one shell or the estabulum cup will be there head will be there neck will be there and the stem will be there so that is the total hip replacement the thr the main indication is when you have the arthritis of the hip when the estabulum is also damaged in some diseases like you go with uh, any arthritic changes in the hip joint when the estabulum is also damaged or in cases of fracture neck of the femur where the arthritis has sets in then hemiarthroplasty will not going to work you need to change the entire hip joint so that is the total hip replacement the total knee replacement is also very common but usually it do not give you in exam the total knee replacement are of uh, two variety mainly that is the posterior stabilized and the cruciate retaining type uh, i think that's uh, all in this uh, processes and the external fixator part thank you thank you so much